It's February and we're gonna start getting ready to plant some potatoes. Now I'm doing things a little differently this year. The last three years I have buried my potatoes in straw, which is called the Ruth Stout method from my understanding. My husband came up with the idea a few years ago and he was reading about this method and I thought, wow, you know what, that sounds kind of cool. Sounds like it'd be easy to harvest your potatoes. So, you know, we started doing that and I've done that for three years. Well, I started noticing something. My potatoes were getting massacred by pests. So we weren't getting really good yields, but I kept doing it each year because again, I liked the idea, it sounded nice. You know, you just put your potatoes down and then put straw on top of them. Just kind of hoping that maybe the next year would be better. Well, it wasn't. And then I started thinking about it. I started thinking about, what am I doing here? <laughs> For one, I live in the south. It's hot, it's humid, we've got lots of pests. I'm putting my potatoes down. And then on top of that, I'm putting down straw, which naturally attracts pests because they wanna break down that straw into organic matter, which is good, right? They have their purpose. I got my roly polies, I got my centipedes and, uh, Y'all, black stinging ants. I cannot tell you how many times I've got ants in my pants, y'all, and stinging me all over. Horrible. So that is what was going on. I was putting the straw down, it tracks all these pests, and they don't care that I got potatoes down there. Those look tasty too, so they go after them. So in the end, I lose a lot of potatoes. This is my potato bed, by the way. It's a bit rough looking, I know, but it works. So I decided I'm not gonna do that method this year. I'm gonna do it like they've been doing for the past, what was it, the Incas that started it 8,000 BC, 5,000 BC, years ago in Peru, up in the Andes Mountains. They grew their potatoes in the dirt. I'm gonna do that. The one downside about this, y'all, is, see this bed? There's not enough dirt in here. <laughs> so I gotta go do some digging today, which is not my favorite thing to do, but I would say that I like how it feels when I'm done. And I look at all that dirt that I just moved and I'm like, wow, that's a lot of dirt. <laughs> and I get a, I get a good workout too, y'all. So sometimes you just gotta embrace the suck, get it done. So let's go move some dirt. And don't mind, every once in a while you'll hear the chainsaw going. Nathan's taking down some trees and chopping down trees that have already fallen down because we've got 11 acres of old growth forest and they're kind of going through this phase where things are dying and falling down. So there's a lot of cleanup to be done. So that's what he's up to today. Ooh, about tripped over my wheelbarrow. All right, let's get going. There you have it. 
This feels great to finally have this done. There's one little section I wasn't able to get up as tall as I need to because I need Nathan to reinforce it right there. It's kind of bowing. Right here. It'll be interesting to see what kind of weeds start growing in this bed because weeds can tell you what's going on with your soil, what's lacking, and maybe what your soil already has and is good on. <sighs> I'm gonna head in, I'm hungry and a little tired. The next time you see me in this video, we're gonna be going over to my cute little local hardware store and picking up those potatoes and planting them. And I'm excited. We're finally gonna get around to planting these potatoes today. I got 33 pounds. I went ahead and got a bunch of Yukon gold this time. Normally I do the purple majesty, I think that's what they're called. And I like the purple potatoes, they're real fun, but my favorite as far as flavor goes is definitely the Yukon gold. So we're gonna try them again this year. The first year I did Yukon gold, the pests really went after them more than I more than the purple potatoes, so I stopped doing them. But since we're gonna do it in the soil this time, I'm gonna see how they do. I think with this situation, since it's such a wide bed, I'm gonna go ahead and just plant one at a time. I've seen people do furrows, but I think with this bed, I'm just gonna do one at a time and I'm gonna do them about four to six inches deep and around eight inches apart, eight to 12 inches apart. I'll just kinda Play it by ear, a little willy-nilly. I'm not gonna come out here with a ruler. I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it. Excuse you. Let's hope I have enough. These are huge. See, a lot of these are already sprouting, which is good. I think I'm gonna lay them out first. Kinda get a good idea where I want everyone to go. Mara, I'm gonna kinda need you to move, baby. You think you can move for me? Um, no? <laughs> Drop it, it's a good girl. Come on, I'm gonna need you to move. Out. Good girl. Mara, drop it. Drop it. Uh, 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 uh. You can't eat my potatoes. No. This one's kind of a funny shape. Almost heart-shaped, huh? 
probably should have let these guys sprout a little bit more than they have, but I'm expecting many days of rain and warmer weather, so I just wanted to get these guys in the ground. They are sprouting a little bit, just not as much as I'd like them to. You stay away from that potato now. You got some funky shapes going on here today. Definitely not perfect. I put them about two feet apart as far as the rows go. I've seen most people do like three feet, four feet. We'll see how it goes. I do have extras. Isn't this bag cool though? I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but heck back in the day they used to make clothes out of these things. Make a shirt out of it, I don't know. <laughs> I do like the smell of burlap, you know? It kind of smells good. All right, let's get these things buried. relaxing feels good to have that done <sighs> now comes for the kind of fun scary part where we wait for them to pop up you know I always get a little nervous when I plant things <laughs> is it gonna work are they gonna grow they'll be fine but <laughs> I get ferns that grow in the soil in the spring summer I don't know what kind they are some types of ferns can be a good indicator that you have a very well balanced fertile soil so when they pop up again this year, I'll get a better look at them and see what kind they are. But if you see here, all this green stuff down, this is that chickweed. This one's called purple dead nettle. It looks very similar to henbit. The purple dead nettle and henbit are both edible and highly nutritious. But the purple dead nettle, henbit, and chickweed they all love growing in fertile soil that's very high in nitrogen, which this is because I'm constantly putting down organic matter, you see. Put more chicken bedding down here. Kind of buried the wild strawberries a bit, but they always pop back up again. And I've got a lot of chickweed growing. I just let my weeds kind of grow together with my veggies. As long as they stay low to the ground and not drowning things out, I just kind of let them be. I know some people worry about the, their weeds sucking up all the nutrients out of your soil, but I've never had any issues like that. They all seem to grow in harmony with each other. Well, I just let them be, and I like them. They're pretty, they flower, they attract pollinators. Kind of went on a little weed tangent there. I've been kind of, I've been getting into learning about weeds in the garden, and I've been so surprised at how many are edible and nutritious. So the more I learn about them, I want to share it with you because I find it just fascinating. Okay, y'all, I got some chickens out. I got four chickens out. Maro keeps eyeing them. She desperately wants to go and catch them. The problem is they're so hard to catch. I've got these very annoying chickens, you guys, that I ordered through Tractor Supply which come from Hoover Hatchery. The last few years, each year, I like to get a batch of Easter Eggers just to add some extra color to our eggs. And I ordered some this last year in 2023. And when they arrived, they did not look like Easter Eggers. They're supposed to give me multiple different varieties. 
this particular batch that they sent me was just one variety and it looked to me like comets or something related to the comet, the golden comet. I did contact them. I was like, these do not look like Easter eggers to me. But they sent me an email and they said, oh no, this is just what they look like this year. But yeah, they're not Easter eggers. <laughs> they're definitely some kind of relation to the golden comet. But where did they go anyway? They're extremely flighty. They're not friendly at all. These golden comets are a very friendly chicken. So whatever these are, I think they're hiding the trees. And whatever they are, I don't know what they are. So, but they fly just, and I can't catch them. They're so fast. I'm not sure I'm gonna have to have Maro come out and get them with me, but she's just too rough still. She's only two and she still just gets a little bit too rough or I worry she's gonna kill him. But I might need her to help me with this today before they get eaten by a hawk or something else. Look, you all puffed up. Hey, Tom. <laughs> the reddish colored ones, those are bourbon reds and then the black ones are the black Spanish. I think the black Spanish are pretty neat looking. They look like the ones that are in the wild. I don't know if I'm gonna take you guys on this adventure of catching chickens today. I don't know what I'm gonna do, Marl. All right, y'all. I'm gonna go catch me some chickens. I'm excited for those potatoes to pop up. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna mix in some beans, just some bush beans and maybe some marigolds. I think so. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Take care and we'll see you next time.